today's video is something different. I have an aviation conundrum for you, a mystery. I, oh no, it needs to be spookier than that day on the channel. I have an aviation conundrum that I need your help with, a mystery that you can help me solve. One of the riskiest flights that I'll probably ever do. Actually, do you know what? That's probably gonna be even more annoying doing it in that style. Let's just jump into the flight seat. We're back in X-Plane again today. And like I said, I need your help solving a problem that I have. Damn it. Which is like a legitimate problem um, based around my round the world trip. We're just gonna go cab okay. And I want, importantly, I want no wind. Where do I do the wind? Wind? Nothing. So this is Magdan Airport in Russia. It's on the east coast of Russia. It's basically about as far away from most other airports that you can get pretty much anywhere in the world. A very, very remote location and the location of one of my stops on the round the world trip. This will be one of the airports that I'll be going through. And it's an important one, not just because of its remoteness, but because of its distance to the next airport that I need to get to. Flying the excellent TalkSim SR22, the Echo Yankee Zulu model, I'll put a link down in the description if you're interested in getting hold of this yourself. Not sponsored, but it is just the most accurate representation of the actual aircraft I'll be flying in real life. And the accuracy is really important because what we're doing today is looking at performance, we're looking at fuel calculations, we're looking at distances traveled, and the question that I really want to ask you is, is this a flight that you would undertake based on the conditions that we have? Now we're going to set the full to fuel, no? We're going to set the fuel to full, which will actually show as 92 gallons in this series, but 90 gallons usable, that's important. So even though the tanks hold 92 gallons, we can only do calculations based on 90. That's an important number. UHMA, Ugolny, Anandir Airport. We're also going to put in a couple of waypoints. The first IFL waypoint, if you're flying along at home, is Busul, B-U-S-U-L, and RNAP is going to be the other one. Done. And so the total distance for that flight plan, just with two quick waypoints, gives us 803 nautical miles. Just like the 90 gallons of fuel usable, that's another important number. So remember that one, 803 nautical miles. All right, let's take off. I'm going to assume clearances and everything else. You can see here on the HSI, it would, let's say we've got a right turn. We're going to pick up our track, and then once we're in the air, let's start going through some calculations. All right, we can get our flaps away. We're gonna start making our right-hand turn. And what I'm gonna do now is actually flick on the autopilot. And the reason why we're putting the autopilot on is no, not just because we're in a Cirrus and we're a Cirrus pilot and that's the only way that we can fly. No, it's because what I wanna do is focus on fuel flow as we're climbing. So if I pull up the MFD here, I go to the, get rid of that, go to the engine page and come down to my mixture. And because this flight is all about fuel conservation, how far can we actually go? What I want to start doing now in the climb is start leaning out. See you're burning uh, 28 gallons per hour. We want to lean back to this little green line here. So I'm going to pull the mixture back, lean it back when we're coming up in the climb. This is what I do in Echo Yankee Zulu as well. The, the display isn't quite as nice as this, this kind of Garmin interface. It's slightly different on the Aberdeen, but the principle is the same. So now we're only burning 23 gallons per hour, past 4,000 feet, climbing for 9,000. If we have a look at the flight plan page, and this FOD is the important one. This is fuel over destination. And currently with the fuel flow that we have, we're not gonna have enough fuel to get to the destination. That's obviously because we're climbing at a higher fuel flow rate. Once we get into the cruise, that will change. But watch this number here. This is the one that I really want your help with. Okay, as we go up in altitude, you can see the fuel flow required. The air fuel mixture is slightly different because we don't need as much fuel because there's not as much air going into the engine. So we can reduce even more down to 22 gallons per hour. Still though, fuel over destination zero, of course, because we're still climbing. Now, actually in the real world flight, I probably would try and get higher than this because I've got oxygen on board. I try and get higher because the higher we can go, the lower our actual fuel flow will be. But I kind of want to play around with some worst case scenarios here. So, okay, leveling off at 9,000 feet. I'm going to let the aircraft accelerate here. And then I'll come over to my engine management page. And what I'm going to do is bring the power back, bringing the RPMs back to around 2,500. See, we've got 67% power here. What I'll do then is I'll continue to bring the throttle back till that's at around 65% power. So 65%. 2,500, nice sweet spot for the Cirrus SR22 G3. But you can see here the fuel flow is still 15.4. We can get that way down. Let's do lean assist. I'm gonna turn the fuel pump off. 
Don't forget to do that first. It's annoying when you lean the aircraft out and you haven't turned the fuel pump off. And then we'll start leaning this out. You can see the engine temperatures, the exhaust gas temperatures going up and now they're coming back down. And what I've been taught in the series is to get those down to about 50 degrees lean of peak. Right about there, perfect. 50 degrees lean of peak, fuel flow, 12 gallons per hour. That's what we're now burning. And if we come back to the flight plan page, you can see we've got five hours, just under five hours to run. But now see here, fuel over destination, 26 gallons. That's what it's assuming I'm gonna have over the top of Anandir Airport if everything continues exactly as it is. So the conundrum, now that we're nicely in the cruise, one thing I wanna show, I'll show you here on the iPad, and I wanna talk about alternates. So you can see here's our flight plan in our plan EFB, UHMM to UHMA, and our nearest airport, as you can see, is up here. This would be our nearest alternate, Pevec Aerodrome, UHMP. If we just add that into the flight plan, UHMP, you can see it will add an additional 346 nautical miles onto the journey. If we go to the flight plan and actually put in enter enter you can see that's going to be as we said another 344 nautical miles fuel over destination now is zero. It means the alternate isn't reachable in this configuration. Now you may be thinking well hang on a minute Steph that's 90 gallons in your SR22 don't you have an auxiliary fuel tank? And yes, I've shown that on the channel before, the Turtle Pack 66 gallon fuel tank that was gonna sit on the back seat. But a combination of some regulation complications, some engineering complications with how the tank actually gets fitted, four and a half million emails, 28,000 phone calls, and one very frustrated step later, I still don't have the fuel tank certified in the back of Echo Yankee Zulu. So I'm thinking about whether I can do this trip just using the internal fuel tanks, the 90 gallons, that Echo Yankee Zulu gives me. Now this flight that we're doing now is the worst case scenario. This is the longest leg of 802 nautical miles. So my question to you, and the question that I'm debating in my head at the moment is, should I do it? At this stage in the video, I just want you to either pause it or stop it or have a think and do your own calculations based on that. Pause this video and tell me in the comments below just based on that, what your thoughts are. Okay, and now you've unpaused the video. Here's a couple of other points to consider as well. The thing is wind, we're doing this nil wind. If I do this flight with around 15 or 20 knots worth of tailwinds, I'm gonna get to the destination with a lot more fuel on board and then potentially could make the alternate if required. But of course with tailwinds pushing me in one way, you can see the alternate on the flight plan here again is actually, it's kind of a northwesterly direction. So I'm not gonna have the tailwinds up there. In fact, I may actually turn into some headwinds. So that alternate may not be possible. The other thing then is of course, do this as a VFR flight. So pick a perfectly good day when I don't need an alternate. Then of course you do run into problems in that the destination airport only has one runway. So you may be able to get in from a weather perspective, but what happens if an aircraft goes in before you and has an incident on the runway and they shut the airport down. Now in that instance, I can tell them that I'm fuel critical, I'll have enough fuel to circle above the airport, wait until they clear the runway and potentially go in and land. But the 26 gallons that I'm due to have, taking into account reserves for this aircraft, that's at least an hour and a bit's worth of circling above the airport to wait for something on the ground to be cleared. So again, my question to you and what I would like your help with in the comments for this video is, what would you do? Would you do it? Should I do it? And should I push forward with the tank? Or would you just say, do you know what, if the tank's being that much of a problem, or no way, Steph, what are you thinking, man? You're an idiot and you need a haircut. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy your aviation and travel content, do consider clicking on that subscribe button. It means a lot to me to see the channel grow. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video.